All right, guys, we're talking how to install a dado blade on a SawStop brand table saw today. There's a couple pointers you need to watch out for, and then a few specific things that apply just to SawStop brand table saws, like setting the dado break. But it's a good review for any table saw on just how to set your dado blade correctly. Stick around. So a dado blade consists of two outer blades, a left and a right and then a series of chippers that go in between. And you really need to use those all in combination. In other words, you don't just use the chippers by themselves. You use, at a minimum, the two outer blades together or the two outer blades plus one or more chippers. As you're installing the outer blades particularly, you want to notice that the teeth are facing towards you as you're standing at the saw but also notice that there's a left and a right to the blade. If you were to install those backwards, you would notice that you're not getting a flat bottom cut. You have to have the bevel of the teeth oriented the right way as a left and a right to get proper cuts with your dados and grooves. And the saw stop specific part of this is this wide dado break. And let's just take a look at it compared to a standard saw stop blade break. And you can see that this dado version is much wider to contact that wide dado blade and make sure it stops in time to prevent any serious injury. So you have to make sure that you swap that out and get a dado break installed in your saw and locked in with the red key. Now one rule is you won't use a riving knife and you do have to turn that handle down all the way. Sometimes your saw stop won't calibrate if this handle is only turned part way down and so you want to make sure you press that handle all the way down even when the riving knife is not in use. So making sure that the teeth are pointing towards you and the sharp corners of the angled teeth are to the inside of the saw towards the arbor flange and we'll press that blade all the way on. Now that you have one blade in place you want to check the spacing between the blade and the dado break. Now once you get familiar with your particular dado blade and any single kerf blades you're using in the shop, this process will become very quick. But in the meantime, you'll want to use this little yellow spacer to check the gap between the blade and the break, and then adjust this yellow screw as necessary with an 8mm Allen wrench to set that gap. Now interestingly, this particular set is not recommended for use on a saw stop, but for a list of blades that are compatible with the saw stop, just drop down to the description box. You'll find a bunch of links there to really good dado sets for using on your saw stop. But the methodology of staggering the teeth and how to install a dado blade on your saw remains the same. And what I specifically want to demonstrate here that's a little bit hard to show when this all is set up on your saw is how to set this gap. And what you do is use the yellow tool that came with your saw to precisely set that gap between the dado blade break and the blade itself. And once you have that gap set correctly, it ensures that number one, you won't get any accidental trips, but also that that blade will come to stop in time to keep you safe. Remember to thank your favorite content creators by subscribing to their channel, hit the bell notification, or just drop them a line in the comment section. Remember to check in the description box for any of the products we used in today's video. After that first blade goes on, you can go ahead and start loading up your chippers. And as you do that, just make sure that the chipper tooth falls between pairs of teeth on the outer blade. And when loading multiple chippers, here's where people tend to get confused. They think that they need to rotate the chipper a certain number of degrees opposite the last chipper, and that's really not true. Each of these blades is balanced individually. So as long as the teeth of one chipper don't contact the teeth of the adjacent chipper, you'll be in good shape. Okay, so a full stack with this set is two outer blades and four inner blades. Those six blades will combine to make a full set. The most common question I get about installing a dado blade is should you use the arbor washer that came with your saw? And you'll have to consult the owner's manual of the particular model of table saw that you use, but Usually you want to make sure that the arbor nut is fully threaded, and I mean fully threaded onto the arbor nut. So you should see threads coming out the other side, and if you don't, you'll have to omit the arbor washer. The way it usually works is for a three-quarter inch stack, you won't use the arbor washer. On thinner stacks, like half inch or three-eighths inch dados, you'll be able to use that arbor washer before the nut.
double check that the two outer chippers are aligned between pairs of teeth on the outer blades. And we'll go ahead and snug that down. This is what the dado blade should look like when it's installed correctly. The key point is the peak of this tip on the outer blade should be towards an outside face. And the same is true with this blade. The highest peak should be towards that outside face. And of course you always want to use a dado insert when running a dado blade on your table saw. You can use an auxiliary fence clamped to the main rip fence of your table saw to partially bury that dado blade. It's a nice way to make rabbit cuts. And then go ahead and power up your saw and get that calibrated. Once the display panel goes to a solid green, you're ready to go. All right guys, there you go. Quick and easy process of installing a dado blade and doing it right on a saw stop table saw. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.